It's the Bad and Bougie Bros. Yeah. Sports Podcast. Jimmy Jen, this is season two, episode two. Yes, sir. Already? Two, two. You know what? I got to go back to this. I just remember we going back to season one when it was said by, I don't know, anyway, that we wouldn't last mm. after the fourth episode. Yeah. And we got Ooh. all 13 of the, first season. of the first season. Yeah. And we're in the second season already? Yeah. Number two already? Come yeah. on. Just, oh, man. Somebody's watch. showing us some love, man. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's showing <laughs> season two, well, episode two. Well, what's going to happen is, um, you know, the other productions we're going to do mm-hmm. in conjunction from this show. Like, there, there were a couple of guests last season that we need to actually do something with them. I yes. won't, I'll leave them nameless for right now, but they have that that charisma. They yes. have that special swag. Very special. All right. Very so, special. special swag. <laughs> yes. So, so, yeah, we'll work on that. And, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, let's rock and roll, man. Let's Episode rock and roll. Two. You know, just like in Cornhole, um, Bad and Bougie Bros, former Cornhole podcast, yeah. we were able to bring in some ballers. Yeah. In the cornhole industry. Yeah. Um, we're starting out in season two, okay? Yep. Yep. Uh, Bad and Bougie Bros Sports Podcast. Yes, sir. We bringing in Hall of Famers right off the bat. Hey. Woo. You think this ain't no joke? <laughs> hey, this this podcast ain't no joke, sis. We bringing in the, the biggest of the bigs Man. In, the, in, the, in the industry. And this time, in this, in this episode, we have Golf Pro. Lindsay Mason the third. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes Lindsay, thanks for joining. Woo-hoo. You know what? I was uh looking over like this 20-page bio, all this stuff, <laughs> all these accomplishments this man has. It is just truly awesome. And I'm just truly blessed. You know, uh we're truly blessed to have him on our show. Uh, a serious golf pro who is a Hall of Famer. Not just a golf pro, he is a Hall of Famer. Hey, man. hey, hey, man. hey, hey, that's pretty good, man. Yes, I appreciate that's it. pretty good. Oh, man. Man. Hey, I'm up there with you, though. Well, on the opposite end of that, I'm in the Hall of Shamer. I'm a Hall of Shamer. That's all it is. Good, a good day of golf for me is coming home with some golf balls. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, you come home with those? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what, Lindsay, tell us about you. Tell us about some of your compliments. Just, just let us know about you, my friend. Born and raised in the city of Detroit. Yes. Uh-oh. 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 From the D. East side. Uh-oh. East side. Uh-oh. Graduated from Detroit Central High School, class of 83. West side. Wait a minute. That's 83. is a little familiar <laughs> right, to right, me. Right, right, right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, hey, hey. Watch this. Now, he said he went to Central High School. Uh-huh. We grew up on what street? Central. And we Time, graduated yeah. what year? 83. Wow. Yeah. I graduated in 82. Uh, we won't hold it against you. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I knew I liked this guy. I, yep. I knew I liked something? this guy. Isn't that something? <laughs> Sorry that's for the interruption, no, man. Go ahead. That's fine. But um, graduated from Detroit Central High School and and uh, attended Morris Brown College on a music scholarship. See, oh, look at that. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, yeah. And he came down to Atlanta, right. where I resided for 21 years. Wow. Okay, he was probably on campus when I brought a couple of artists through there. There you go, there man. You go. Oh my yeah. God, this guy. And, and it's 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 been uh, it's been a blessing. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, and decided instead of going into the music industry, and I, I'm a, a voice major, so I still sing, perform, okay, every time. Oh, but uh, golf was always there, and I said, no, nah, I think I want to play some golf, teach some golf. Let me find out the ins and outs. And eventually, I wanted to be known as number one in my market mm. in metropolitan awesome. Detroit. Awesome, man! You say eventually you eventually. want to be known? Oh, well, you, you, you never <laughs> say. I, I, I'm still striving for the pinnacle. I might be there, that, but in my mind, I'm still striving. Hall of Famer, Mr. Humble, <laughs> Mr. Humble it. here. I, I appreciate <laughs> it. Mr. Humble here, uh, uh, Coach Lindsey. So tell us how you say you grew up in Detroit. Um, East side, moved to the uh, well, to the west side, yeah. whatever. At, I guess at what age? What 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 developed your passion to play golf? Good question. I was a very good question. I was a former golf caddy at Country Club of Detroit and Gross Point Farms, mm. and I seen at a very early age the individuals that basically had the money, 
in metropolitan Detroit, meaning uh, the Ford family, the Fisher family, mm -hmm. ah. the Firestone family. Uh, the Holland family. Uh, yeah. The Jimmy Jam family. Jimmy, Jimmy you, got, Jam you got jokes. Family. Yeah, we <laughs> you yeah, got okay. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. And, and so at an early age, I said, oh, man, golf. This is, you know, I'm just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, it, I thought it was a boring sport until mm -hmm. um, I seen the players, meaning the, the, caddy, the individual members that I caddied for, mm -hmm. and I decided, wait a minute, I can, I can do this myself, um, developed the technique, and the technique came from uh, learning each individual member's golf swing. Ah, right. oh, that's smart. That's how I did it. Learning their golf swings, learning what clubs to use in certain positions, and giving them the recommendations, along with working on my game uh, when I wasn't caddying. I mean, I, I developed a lot. Of, of, of skill just watching the members, emulating the members. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. <laughs> just that simple. Just that simple. <laughs> if I, did I, did, I mean, you were critiquing, were you able to sometimes help them out with their, it went from very, what you? Very much so. Not only, not so much the swing, mm -hmm. but giving them recommendation on club selection. Ah, okay. Very okay. big. Not so much the swing because they're playing, right. you know, they're competing. But club selection, what clubs to use, and, it's, and I was a very good individual uh, reading greens, putting greens. Okay. Which okay. way the ball is going to break on the green. Okay. That's where the money came from. That's where the big tips came from. Okay. Right. Well, I, I got to ask you this. You know, I, I said before, you know, in episode one, we want to be a little bit controversial about some things. Now, let's be honest. We're talking about gross point. Mm -hmm. I mean, just up until like what 2010, <laughs> you know, whatever, you couldn't drive down. Shoot, what's that? Jefferson Street, yeah, Jefferson or whatever, right. man, right. getting pulled over. Right. Just to be me. So, how were you able to get into a uh, country club in Gross Point and become a caddy? I got into it by mistake, actually. One of my really? first cousins, name was Harlan Clay Mason. He's deceased. He was a golf caddy, but he didn't like it. Uh -huh. And so I was looking for a job opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'll go check this out, just because he didn't like it. Right. I wow. took a, I took a, I took a, a love uh, for the game, caddying, not knowing the individuals that you're going to meet. Right. Uh, because you're, you're the player, you're, you're caddying for that particular player. Okay. And so he's entrusting you with he or she with, with his golf game. Right. That's right. big. That's, right. that's, that's big. Yeah. And so um, not only just carrying the bag, learning the yardages, learning what clubs uh, do in certain positions, and informing them, no, you might not want to hit that six iron. You might want to hit this seven iron because right now you're filling your game. You're hitting the ball, pure. And so if you're hitting a six iron and it's a seven iron distance, you're going to fly over that green, and that's going to cost you a shot when you should have been on the green the first time. <sighs> Some listen. <laughs> So <laughs> exactly. right, 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 right. So tell me this, uh, Coach Lindsey. What would you tell your younger self when you first started to caddy and to play golf yourself? What would you tell yourself as a player, as a young, as a youngster once you first started out? What what kind of things you would tell a young player now? Because I know you coach youth, you coach high school, you coach whatever. I know you do all that. So what a kid that's never played before or whatever or think they can play, what, what are the first things you God takes to do? Uh, uh, one of the first things I, I ask uh, students, especially junior high school to high school students, mm -hmm. why do you want to learn how to play golf? Not uh -huh. just, right, that's, I mean, that's a very important question, not just because the parent, because if the parent is trying to push the junior golfer to play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we there's an opportunity episode. they might not want to play. Right. And so... If I get a feel from them that they really want to play, then we can move forward. So, what is that feel? What do you? What is it? A, a spark in their eye? What is it that makes you realize this kid really wants to play this sport? I would. It's a. It's a look in the eye. I'm. I'm looking at the golf swing. I'm seeing that they're trying, and once I give them the information on breaking the golf swing down, developing the swing, getting them to work. Not so much on a full swing, but just some chip shots first mm -hmm. to get them to get the ball mm -hmm. in flight. One of the hardest things in golf to do is to get the ball in flight and to go straight. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. yes. You know, I got to say this, too, because um, I got to be honest. Coach Lindsey has given me lessons. That's how I met him about three years ago. Yes, sir. No, yeah, yeah, it's about three years yeah. ago. Yeah. And, uh, and what I noticed, you, and I've noticed other coaches, they're kind of rigid when mm -hmm. I, I see him coach. Coach Lindsey, you are just an awesome person, man. It's so easy. You don't you don't make a person feel bad. And I've watched other and I watch as you coach, you know, mm -hmm. some of the students. Yes. And it just seems like they're enjoying themselves. Yes. They don't have to worry about, am I doing this wrong? My dad's gonna say anything, nope. or is the coach gonna nope. say and it's all positive. I just know this all positive body, right. you know, right. uh whatever. It's right. just yeah, so I envision um individuals especially junior golfers leading up to high school and collegiate level, mm -hmm. because I've, I've, I've had players that's like that today. Um, once you get them moving, swinging the club, getting the ball, hitting the ball in the fairway, um, the rest is just fine tuning uh, what areas of, of your golf game that you need to be focused on. Okay. Correct. Go Meaning scoring. What kind of player I want to know I would say 90% of the people that play golf today, millions, never break 100. <laughs> wow. I've done it once <laughs> in they, they four years. Never I, I've done it three, three games in a row I did it. What happened was I stopped playing at about the 14th hole. Got you. So, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, right. <laughs> so we want to get them on the, on the, on the path of, what are some of your goals? Mm -hmm. You know, if you can break uh, 50 for the first nine, right, that's mm -hmm. an accomplishment. Yes. Breaking 50. Yes. Heading into playing 18 holes because it's all about it's time. 18 holes of golf might take you four hours, yeah. 15 minutes to mm -hmm. play. That's mm -hmm. a lot of time. Yeah. That's a lot of strokes. Yeah. Right. That you can accumulate. But the object to the game of golf is to get the least amount of strokes as possible in the 18-hole round. Yes, sir. So if par is 72, you're trying to tie that particular score, meaning 72 or something less, which will be one or two under par, which will get you under that. Aha. Uh -huh. Correct. My next question is this, because I'm always, I got like four sets of clubs. I shouldn't have said that to you. Because he always told me, you don't need another set. But anyway, I've <laughs> had less than two years. I got to go back. What, tell me about as far as the equipment, how much... Like, uh, we're going to talk about a youth a, yes. a youth person. Then we'll go to an adult, older guy like myself who just started playing. Um, how much do a parent have to spend for golf equipment for their child? Should they start out with a good name brand or, you know? I would say just a junior set will range you. A, it's not a junior set, but a beginner set. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. A beginner set will probably cost you anywhere between a good, I would say, 350 to $500. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah, but okay. you want to start. You want to start with a junior set or a beginner set, and work your way from that. So you wouldn't advise a person, a uh, parent, to go to the um, what? Uh, what do you get? Uh, Dunham's. Dunham's or the pawn shop <laughs> to get the kids clubs. Well, well it, it, not, not so much as kid clubs. No, okay. no not at the pawn shop. Okay. Not at the pawn shop. Gotcha. Adults, you you might be able to find a, a decent set. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, but not, but. Uh, with the junior set, we're talking about longer shafts. Ah. And so what individuals still do, some have in the past, they buy the adult set and then they go in and cut the shaft down and, and re-grip them to oh. make, you know, the size fit right. the junior golf. Right. But right. sometimes that throws the weight off right. of, the, of the club itself. Okay. So you might want to just look into investing a junior set. Okay. Correct. You know what? I wanna, I'm going to redirect things now because I want to make this more about you, Coach Lindsey. Mm -hmm and your accomplishments. Sure. Please tell us, I know that you were inducted, inducted to the Hall of Fame, okay? Please tell us about that. Yes. I was inducted to the African American Golfers Hall of Fame um, this past May of 2023. Nice. Um, in West Palm, I appreciate it. Yeah, congratulations, In, in sir. West Palm Beach, Florida. Mm. Um, very, uh, it came out of nowhere, was not expecting it at all. Um, I've been a professional golfer, now a member of the international PGA uh, for the past 36 seasons. Oh, mm -hmm. man. And, and I'm the head pro at, at C.J. Barrymore mm -hmm. in uh, Clinton Township, and I'm the teaching golf professional of 
Cherry Creek Golf Club, which is located in Shelby Township. Uh, very bougie, very bougie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I've been called that as well. <laughs> <laughs> bougie bros. Yes, sir. Yes, and we so, got bougie bros golf next time. I appreciate it. But, um, Look, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. I, I have been blessed to be doing something that I love to do and have the opportunity to get a wage in doing it. You know what? I know we, we had a brief conversation, and talk about your travels, man. Talk about all the places you go, people that request you, man, because you're so good at what you do. I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm uh, doing this time of the year, which is considered my semi-off season. I'm still teaching um, at C.J. Barrymore, but I like to travel a little bit during the off season. So right now I'm teaching three weeks out of each month during the off season, and I'm going to be spending a week in South Florida. So that could be... Tampa, it could be West Palm Beach or Orlando, Florida. Okay. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Wow. So, you know, this is this is this is my visualization. Coach Lindsay gets this phone call, certain client who drives a phantom, puts you on a plane, give you a couple hours, send you home. You got some of them kind of clients? I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working Fabulous. on it. Fabulous. Fabulous. I'm working on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, this is a question for you. You know, you say you travel back and forth as far as different seasons. So, obviously, you're here in Michigan. Like, give some dates where you're usually here, and then when you go off to Florida and do your teaching. Florida, latter parts of each month. So, right now, I'm here up until about the latter part of what well, we're in December now. So Christmas weekend, the week just after Christmas, I'll be heading south for another week okay. and then come back. Um, after that, I'll be getting ready to go to and attend the Dallas Cowboy and Detroit uh -oh, Lions uh -oh, game. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm, That's a very, awesome. I'm, a, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I plan on playing Dallas Cowboys Golf Club uh, in Texas. And after that, I'll be getting ready to, to attend uh, the PGA Golf Show in January, which is located in Orlando, Florida. Okay. You know what, sir? I've been hogging all the questions. I got to give this young man here yes, okay. some time with you, Coach I can Lindsay. Ask, I can Please. ask. I actually, I wanted to ask because I, uh, I play a little bit of golf. I kind of just got into it recently. I sure. work golfing, so I was kind of wondering, like, who do you teach everybody? Like, I saw you were talking about you teach like him. You were teaching kids. I so. teach. I teach everyone. I'll, everyone. Any, anyone who wants to learn. I, my, my earliest age. I started teaching kids at the age of three. Oh. Okay. Well, right. I'm a, I'm a terrible golfer, so I was no. I was wondering if I could get some lessons. Yes, sir. Maybe Not, or like a card yeah, or something. Yeah, I'll definitely give you my card. Okay. Uh, yeah. but th that's, give us a time to plug, yeah. Coach yeah. Lindsay. Oh, Come on, tell, give us seven, some. I teach seven days a week. My yeah, telephone number area code three one three six three three five nine zero four three one three six three three five nine zero four. Company's name is Mason Golf and Golf Clinics. Uh, my website is www Mason Golf Dash Golf Clinics dot com. Um, you can Google me, Mason Golf, and I'm sure the information will pop up. Well, I Googled him, and it's like, man, he got his own, like, 20 pages all by himself. He really does. It's like, he is the man. I'm like, I know this guy. That's my coach. Yay! I appreciate okay. it. I, have, I do have another question. I was going to ask, do you, have you, uh, I don't know if you said this already, but have you always been into golf, like, even when you were a child, or did the passion not come until later? Actually, my, my passion has always been music. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been it's been music. I mean, I grew up performing um, in plays through elementary, junior high school, high school, and college, and a vocal major. But golf, I was always playing golf in between that. And so in, instead of going into the music industry, I decided I wanted to become a professional golfer. Okay, so, coach, just real quick, you say you're in music. Can you give us a Luther Vandross? Ooh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. How's that? Oh, that man. Amazing. Hey. Awesome. I, I thought Producer I, Doug. I, for real. Producer Doug hey. has a studio right, right next right door. Right yes, sir. Okay. Right. We have to get you in there. The it. time is right. <laughs> <laughs> we can do them both. There right, you that'll go. Work. Awesome. That'll work. Yes, sir. What kind, of, what kind of music do you R do? R&B. R&B and Neo Soul. Okay. Yes. I, yes. Okay. Yeah. You look like a metal guy to me, man. A little metal guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a genre of all music. That, Fair enough. Very much. Much. I love all <laughs> oh, yeah. Very much. Produce the tug like. Very, what very, is this guy? Very much. So. <laughs> I, I, I was. I, 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 I was just down in, in Key West trying to. 
find my man. And I actually found this spot, old Jimmy Buffett. No kidding. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Nice. Oh, 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 yeah. And the Margarita Vin. Did you? I, okay. I was there two weeks yeah. ago. Oh, you know, oh. my neighbors took me to a Jimmy Buffett concert about 10 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. And Lionel Richie was there, too. But I'm like, Jimmy Buffett, oh, you know, yeah. actually have fun, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, cool. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one man that took music and just, I mean, I think they said he was a billionaire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when he passed away because uh, he had the chain of uh, restaurants right. and bars. Right, right, right. And, uh, yeah, he took music into the stratosphere. Yeah. And, you know. And doing, 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 this time, doing this time of the year when traveling back and forth to Florida, you get a chance when, when I'm kind of relaxed and not rushing because I'm always um, on somebody's time, meaning most of the time it's mine, but just everything is just time management. Mm. And getting the chance to just take that flight to Florida and just make that drive down to Key West. I stopped Key Largo all the way down to Marathon and just did the Florida Keys and just get a chance to just relax and drive and, and check out the scenery and then get the opportunity to play Key West Golf Club. Hey, wow. Coach, Coach wow. I, I want to drop some names wow. and some locations. Uh, me being the horrible <laughs> golfer that, mm -hmm. that I am, but I've been blessed to play. I played the Malibu Country Club, mm -hmm. and my God, you're talking about a beautiful sight. Wow. Um, it was early morning, and it was foggy. Okay. Okay. So can you imagine teeing off? You're on, a, on the side of a mountain. Right. Right? Right. It's foggy. You don't even know what you're shooting. At. Right. The, the sign points, right. right? And I think that hole was a par three, okay. actually. Okay. Right? Straight down. Sure. And... Uh, uh, needless to say, I didn't get in the hole, but it was just breathtaking. Right. And that's the thing about golf. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. people who have never uh, or people who think it's a boring sport, yeah. they're sadly mistaken. It's, exactly. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's man. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, the, the, the other thing I want to throw in there is that sometimes, you know, like, again, I've always played at some nice courses uh, down in Florida. Sure. Uh, being in the music industry, mm -hmm. I uh, align myself with people. Mm -hmm. I played the Doral. I played Turnberry. I I, I, I played both, I, okay. and I worked at Turnberry. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. I was brought in, I was brought in by Jeff Sofer, the owner. Okay. Now. Okay. Of Turnberry. Wow. How, what years? What years were you this, in? This Turnberry? was 1990. Okay. Oh, yeah. So so my. <laughs> that is funny. That's when I played. Yeah. Down there. Um, yeah. There's a friend of mine named James Thomas, James T. He was on WEDR in Miami. Okay. Um, he's the one that gave me all my golfing mm -hmm. privileges, you know, because he was at the radio station, right? right? Uh, and I just have to mention this. There was one time I played with Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. okay? And um, it was an awesome day of golf for me mm -hmm. uh, because what happened was I was, you know, hacking at the, sure. the, the greens and stuff. And, and he came over to me and his manager, they were like, uh, sir, We'd like to play through. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. I was able to say I golf with right. Michael Jordan. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Theo Ratliff, who used to play no for the kidding. Pistons. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Uh, used to play, uh, and and Allen Houston, okay. who was a Pistons player. Uh, he was also, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, used to give golf lessons to them. Um, at one point, a few years ago, uh, not under the Campbell administration for Detroit Lions organization, under Codwell's um, coaching, I was, the, um, I was the golf pro that gave the golf clinics for the Detroit Lions organization. Uh, I did that for four years for the draftees that were coming in. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I did wow. that for a few. And and uh, But Hugh Perkins is one of my uh, <laughs> Fox 2. Okay. Retired Fox yeah. 2 News. He's one of my personal students. Awesome. I mean, it's, 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 it's been a, a, a number of individuals just over the years. That's really and cool. um, it's, it's, it's still giving, I still get a joy and a love when teaching and seeing ex ex students excel and getting that golf ball out the tee. Well, I tell you what, Coach, even though I'm not that great, I have my yeah. days, but I tell you what, I didn't get better until I took lessons from you. Yes, sir. So I still, I really still reach back to mm -hmm. what you taught me. Yes, sir. You know, and some guys want to bet me they've been golfing for years. Right. I mean, 25 years or right. so, and they'll tell you themselves, I was able to beat these guys. Right. That's for a beautiful real. Thing. So I was like, hey, 
So I got yeah. taught from the best. I appreciate it. No, I, I appreciate it, it Coach. Yeah. It's, but it, uh, it's, it's just it's just a, it's just an honor. It's an honor for you to be here again. If I hadn't said earlier, so it, thank you, my. It's friend. definitely a pleasure for for, for me being here and and, um, and and seeing your accomplishments and, and oh. with the show uh, and your golf game. Oh, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, question. Now, all your winnings when you play. Do you give him a cut? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I do post them on Facebook. Yes, sir. He, 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 does, he does do Holding that. Holding the money. He does, he does do that. He does do that. He give a brother a shout out. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. What people fail to realize, most club golf professionals do not have the opportunity to do what? Actually play golf. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I've only played this past season in the state of Michigan. Only got the opportunity to play four times. But I was brought in um, um, this past season. This is my third year doing it. I'm the host golf professional for the sponsors event for the Rocket Mortgage Classic oh, while the tournament wow. is going. Man, yeah. nice. at Detroit wow. Golf Club. Wow, wow. right, that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, and so uh, um, my career, I signed um, to become a golf professional. I was the first black golf professional at Detroit Golf Club nice. back in the day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That yeah, was that's, the, huge. that's when Coleman Young, the oh, late Coleman mayor, Young. <laughs> the late mayor, the mayor Coleman right, Young, right. was the mayor. Wow. That was in 1986. Wow. Yeah. Mm. But I was the first golf professional that come out of Detroit Golf Club. Man. Yeah. This dude is heavy, man. Big time. Hey. Yeah. I'm just hey, trying to keep man. my golf ball straight. Man. 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 Trying to keep my Shoot, golf ball man. straight. You See? Know, for, for those who haven't played golf, um, I mean, no, no kidding. It is the most engaging thing you mentioned earlier like four and a half hours of play oh yeah and uh for me the worst part of golf is going to the parking lot <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you're like oh god i gotta face reality right again, yeah. you right. Know? right right so i mean for those of you guys who have never played golf man give it a shot it's addicting very you, know, it, you you and it's scholarship expensive. opportunities scholarship See? opportunities um colleges are looking for students um to give them scholarships for golf. You know what? Full ride, not the, just partial. Full ride. Full ride. You know what? I got to bring this up too because I'm very, I used to work with her. Um, she is the founder of Midnight Golf. I know Renee Fluker. Yeah, Renee yeah. Fluker. Yeah. yeah, I used to work with her. You're talking yeah. about a wonderful person. Yeah. She start, I remember she started Midnight Golf. Yeah, yeah, she doing So well. many kids she put through college through her organization. It's just mm. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, she's doing well. Midnight Man, Golf is doing we gonna well. We're going to have to get her on the show yeah. next time. <laughs> yep. You know, well. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, man, small world. But, yeah, I used to work with her, state of Michigan mm -hmm. or whatever. Awesome person, yeah. man. She is awesome. Yeah. Golf yep. is, golf, this is a billion-dollar industry. Golf is, in my mind, golf is the number one sport in the world, the game of golf. You know, I got to say this because, I mean, I really fell in love with it over COVID because I may play. My neighbors to take me out a couple times. So I never did. But COVID, the one, the one time – Friend took me out. We went to the course in Southfield, right down the street here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I shot a 63. Okay. You know, I took some money from my par three, how you get right. it on the green. Right. I two of them. Right. I didn't know what I was doing, but I won some money, <laughs> like nine bucks or something right. like that. But I fell in love with it then through COVID. And it's like, I can't believe this. Well, I've been missing all my life. I really love golf. And Cornhole. Beautiful thing. Corn was like, beautiful so, thing. Is there anything else you want to close up with? Any questions you have for um, Coach Lindsay? I was I was going to ask earlier when we were talking about uh, f um, when we were talking about golf courses. You were talking about you were in Florida. You were in Florida. Was that the nicest golf course that you've been to, or probably the nicest course that I've ever played is Oakland Hills Country Club oh. here in West Bloomfield. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. that's a but, local. But, uh, yeah, I mean oh, that's the number one club, Oakland Hills. Oakland I mean, Hills. If okay. you, you get the opportunity to play there, you've you've, you've done something. So you've arrived. Yeah, yeah huh? you, definitely. Okay. But I've Definitely played, there yeah, I've played a lot of golf courses in mean, Florida, PGA National Golf Club, which is in West Palm Beach Resort, beautiful track, uh, my home club, um, Tampa Palms Golf and Country Club, beautiful facility. I mean, everything around, as soon as you pull in, paradise. Awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Golf is paradise. Paradise. Tell you what, Coach Lindsey, Mason the third. Yes, sir. Man. 
I appreciate it. I bow down <laughs> to you, brother. Thank it. you for being here. I appreciate it. Man, we love having the show. Thanks for kicking off the season for yes, us, sir. man. Congratulations. This is, man, I feel so good. I, I feel I honored you. being here. Beautiful studio, man, I would like to say. You. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very studio. much. Yeah, yes, we, yes, we try. You know, some people used to say, oh, you can start a podcast in your basement. No, <laughs> no, 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 this no, is, no. This is first class, John. That's right. First class. Thank you for noticing that. I appreciate it. Coach Lindsay. Yes, sir. Again, man, thank you for being on his show. Bad and Bougie Bros, sports podcast. Episode number the two. Episode number two. two. Come to a close. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thank coach. you very much. We are out, fellas. See Take ya. care. Thank you. Yeah.